Hi guys, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Um, so on my last video, I talked a little bit about how I was diagnosed with good pasture syndrome and just a little bit about my story. Uh, so I plan to go a little bit more in depth today about what good pasture syndrome is exactly and the symptoms and um, kind of a little bit more about like what the treatments are and stuff. So let's get started. So what is good pasture syndrome? Well, the autoimmune disease is extremely rare. It's one in two million, and it usually only affects um, males ages 20 to 30 and 60 or older, but it obviously doesn't judge. Um, I've, I've seen countless Facebook groups. Um, it affects all ages, all races. Um, it's a very, very, very terrible disease. It attacks very quickly. It uh, attacks the lungs and the kidneys. When I was diagnosed, um, I had water in my lungs and my kidneys were 100% um, end failure. So they were gone with um, the proper treatment though. They were able to save my lungs. So I was very blessed that I didn't need um, any further treatment for my lungs or a transplant especially. Um, so good pasture syndrome, exactly. Um, it produces antibodies against collagen, which is a protein that helps build up connective tissue in your lungs and your kidneys. Uh, so it basically, it's a very, very, very aggressive autoimmune disease. Not good. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, when I was diagnosed, like I said, I was lucky that I didn't need a lung transplant, only kidney. Um, but with treatments, um, I, was, I went into plasmapheresis. I had dialysis. I had cytoxin and ster steroids. So um, it was cytoxin chemotherapy. There was dialysis, which is, there's two types. There is peritoneal and there's hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is basically what they start when you're obviously first diagnosed. They put a temporary cath in my leg, which was later a permanent cath in my uh, chest. Basically dialysis, hemodialysis is when they take out all the blood in your body and they put it into a machine it filters and cleans out all your blood and then put back into your body. And then hemodialysis is kind of the same thing, but it's with sugar water. So it fills up your abdomen with sugar water. They kind of put like a little bag in your stomach and it fills it up with sugar water and then like sucks in all the toxins and then puts it into a machine and, or like sucks it all in and then sucks it all out. And that's basically what it is. Except hemodialysis is about a four to six hour um, process and hemodialysis is a 15 hour process. So they're both very different. Um, I did both. I definitely recommend peritoneal dialysis. Um, hemodialysis was very, very, very hard on my body. I went to Loma Linda three times a week and it was four hours long. Um, peritoneal dialysis is a lot longer. I would go, I would get out of school at 3 p.m., connect right when I got home, and then I would be done at 6 a.m and then go back to school. But you can kind of be more lenient on it. You can unhook for about two and a half hours and kind of go see a movie or go, you know, do more. The diet on it is also a lot more lenient, which I really preferred. I love food. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it was crazy treatment. Um, it was a lot. Plasmapheresis is basically when they take um, 300 uh, milliliters of blood out of your body and they separate the red and white blood cells and they take out the antibodies of the autoimmune disease, they clean it all out and then they uh, put it back in your body. And then also there is blood transfusions, which they just put clean blood in your body and they, um, I was anemic, I did not have enough blood in my body so I had to have more blood put in me. Um, there was a lot that they have to do to make sure that you're healthy and to make sure that you're, you know, that you'll survive. Um, when I was diagnosed, I had so much potassium and phosphorus in my system. Usually, uh, a lot of people are when they're diagnosed. So they have to go through so much to make sure that, I don't even want to go into <laughs> so much what they have to do to make sure that they get the potassium out of your body. Um, but yeah, um, it's a, it's a crazy, crazy autoimmune disease. Um, I really plan to make so many more videos about the disease and dialysis and plasmapheresis and just all the different things that come in contact with the disease and everything that you have to deal with, the medications that they make you take, um, the qualifications that you have to go through in order to be, um, active on the transplant list, um, the simple fact of you know, being on the transplant list isn't always mean that you're active, that you have to go through all the, the things to make sure that you're okay to have a transplant. Um, just 
all of the many, many, many things that come along with autoimmune disease and needing a transplant. And I also did do a little tally on Facebook, which thank you all so much for participating. And I absolutely love when you guys participate um, and all the questions I ask and everything. So I did a tally on Facebook and 40, I think 47, 43 people replied. So out of 43 people, I asked um, how many how common it, I basically wanted to find out how common it is needing a transplant after you're diagnosed with autoimmune disease, lung, kidney, or not needing a transplant at all. So out of 43 people, um, 32 people needed kidney transplants, nobody needed lung transplants, and 11 people were, um, were lucky enough to not need transplants at all. So that's amazing that, you know, with the, with all of the, you know, just being in remission and everything, they didn't need transplants. It's amazing. It's, um, it's, Awesome, nobody needed lung transplants. Um, I did see a good amount of people that were very similar to me. They kind of you know, had water in the lungs or damage to the lungs at first, but the treatment were able to save them, so that's amazing. I also saw a couple people did have more than one transplant. It was like two or three, which it's amazing. So amazing, God bless you. Um, but yeah, I mean, thank you guys so much for replying to you know my, my questions on Facebook. I love that we can all do this together. Um, if you guys have any more questions for me or video suggestions of what I should do, please comment below. Please let me know. Um, I look forward to sharing more of my story and just more information, just everything that I, I know with you guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for the support. And again, thank you so much. Like and subscribe.